Good afternoon, everyone. I am Jeremy Class, and you are here watching Magic with Class. I think I will be able to upload this video a little earlier than normal. So the spoilers have officially been revealed for today. And while I will not be going over every single one in this video, instead I will probably be uploading another video later on that goes over some of the cards I don't cover today. I wanted to cover some of the red cards specifically that have been spoiled today because I think they're pretty interesting. And then I think I will talk about one or two reprints that are non-red and then some of the lands that were also spoiled. So as you can see from the screen, the first card I'm gonna be talking about is Jessica Thrice Reborn. So this card was one of the legendary Planeswalker commanders that had been leaked, but now here it is, the official version. And Jessica in the story was the sister of Kamal. Kamal started off red, he even has a legendary creature card that is mono red. But over the years, he kind of mellowed out, became more introspective, and now he's mono green. His sister also went through a number of transformations, and that's why she is called Thrice Reborn. She started out as Jessica. She became Paige the Untouchable, or Phage the Untouchable, uh, a mono black card, legendary creature, that if it deals damage to an opponent, automatically causes that opponent to lose the game, which is very interesting. Phage the Untouchable in the story was unable to touch any type of material because it would wilt and decay except for silk so silk was not affected by her abilities so she was able to wear silk clothing and interact with things through silk i also believe there was one other person who she had a relationship with that was also unaffected by her abilities so she was phage the untouchable for quite a while and then I believe she was also a Chroma, which was actually three women fused together by a magical sword. The story is fairly interesting, but it's, it's a little difficult to get into in full here. And it's actually been a long time since I read that story and looked through that lore, so I could be forgetting some things. So, on to the card. Jessica Thrice Reborn. She is a legendary planeswalker. That could be your commander. And she also has partner. She has two loyalty abilities. And then she has, a, I guess you could call it like a static ability. It's really an ETB ability. So when she does enter the battlefield, she enters with loyalty counters on it for each time you've cast a commander from the command zone this game. So if it's the first time you're casting Commander and you cast Jessica, she will come into play with just one loyalty. She actually has no way to gain loyalty except with her Enters the Battlefield ability. So I guess you're going to want to partner her with a very low-cost Commander that you can repeatedly summon and then allow and then summon Jessica once you've played your other Commander partner a few times and we're going to see a partner that actually works extremely well with jessica that's also mono red in just a moment so what are her abilities besides that that's just the battlefield effect well first you get to choose target creature and until your next turn if that creature would deal combat damage to one of your opponents it deals triple that damage to that player instead so this card has a theme centered around three, as she was di three different people throughout her life. Eventually, I think she does become Jessica again. She does get separated from uh, a Chroma, and she appears in her original form, and then she becomes a Planeswalker, which I think that's what they're depicting here. So, basically, you control a creature, you use her zero ability, she doesn't go up or down in loyalty, and then if that creature does combat damage to a player, it does triple that damage. Some people have asked why this doesn't just give triple strike, since double strike is a thing and first strike is a thing. It's because they would have to change the combat rules 
which they would have to overhaul the entire combat rules, which I don't think they're willing to do just to bring triple strike into the game. They could change this idea in the future. And I think it would be cool to have triple strike. Some games have like triple attack where the card does, a, you know, where the card can attack three times or it does triple the damage. This is a fair way though to essentially give a creature a triple strike without actually giving it triple strike. And actually if the card has double strike and you use her ability to triple the damage, it will actually do times six damage. So I can see uh, this commander in a double strike deck, a deck that uses plenty of ways to either give double strike or just has plenty of creatures that already naturally have double strike. Could also go an equipment route. A lot, of, some equipment does give double strike. I would also consider using this commander in a deck that centers around doubling and tripling damage. So there's a whole bunch of damage doublers in red, and there's one card that actually triples damage that just got released within this past year, I believe. So Jessica would actually be a decent commander in those types of decks. You may also want ways to add loyalty, loyalty to her since she has no natural way to gain loyalty, except with that enters the battlefield ability. Luckily, she only costs three. So the first time she dies, she'll only cost five to recast. And then she'll come into play with two counters. That's if you didn't summon your other partner commander yet. And you should be playing with her with a partner. You shouldn't be playing her without a partner. Take advantage of everything that she has, I, I would say. So that's her zero ability. She does have a minus X. Uh, she deals X damage. which And X is the amount of loyalty you choose to pay. Obviously, it can't be more than the amount of loyalty that she has. But she deals X damage to each of up to three targets. So let's say she has three loyalty counters. You minus X and you choose three for X. So she, she minus threes. It will do three damage to up to three targets. So if you have three opponents, she can deal three damage to each of them. She can deal three damage to three different creatures. So I guess that's pretty... Versatile, although I don't think you're going to be able to get a huge value for X. But maybe you will because there was a, another partner commander spoiled that I am definitely considering playing with her in an interesting type of deck. And I think I might do a deck tech video on that after Commander Legends has officially been revealed. I do want to build around many of these commanders. So this is the sorcery associated with Jessica. Each of the mythic legendary partner cards has a sorcery or an instant that bears their name. So this is Jessica's will. It's three mana just like she is. It's a sorcery and they all have every card in the cycle has this effect. You get to choose one but if you control one or more commanders you can choose both of these. So what are the, the abilities? Well, the first one is add red mana for each card in target opponent's hand. I guess this would have been out of control if you could add red based on each opponent's hand. So you have to do you have to target a player. Hopefully you're going to target a blue player or a player that has a ton of cards in their hand. This could easily generate a ton of mana though, depending on the opponents that you're playing. But even if it just generates two or three, uh, it's still extra mana in addition to what you're playing to actually cast the card. It should be pretty decent, especially if you control a commander, because you'll be able to add mana and then use the second ability as well, which is to exile the top three cards of your library, and you may play them this turn. I like when the card says that you may play them, because this allows you to also play lands. If it just said you may cast them, you couldn't play lands, you could only cast spells and i also like that the first the the first ability and the second ability tie into each other so you're going to play this hopefully gain a ton of mana and you're going to use that mana generated by this card to cast or play the three cards that you exile off the top of your library so it does the effects are synergistic with each other i believe every card in this cycle has two effects that are very synergistic to each other 
I don't know, though, if I would play this in a deck centered around Jessica. I wish this kind of, you know, triple damage until end of turn or something. But I guess you may want to use this card because it generates you a ton of mana. And you're probably going to be wanting to cast Jessica over and over and over again throughout the course of the game. I should also mention that there are specific cards that care about how many times you've cast your commander. So a deck that uses Jessica may want to run those cards, especially if your goal is to cast Jessica and your partner commander many, many times throughout the course of the game. Hmm, Jessica's Will, this is a fair card in the cycle. I don't think it's overpowered. Uh, I would have liked it probably a little better if it was an instant. I don't think it would have made the card too much more powerful. But, you know, I like it. We'll, we'll see how it does. I'm sure some of these cards play much better than they actually read. So, that's Jessica. And... We'll go over this card now. Tago is the name that's seen here, but I'm sure that's not the official translation as of yet. I don't think we've seen this card in English. So, its ability. Well, first it's a three mana card, two of anything, and one red for a 2-2. Two -two. Its ability states when a land enters the battlefield, so pretty much a version of landfall, although it doesn't have the landfall, the landfall um, wording. When a land enters the battlefield under your control, Create an artifact equipment token. That's interesting that this creates a token that's not only an artifact. They've done that before, that, but it's also an equipment. I don't think they've done that too many times. So the artif it creates an artifact equipment token named Rock. <laughs> that's funny. It has equipped creature, has one, and a tap. Deal two damage to target creature or player. And it has an equipped cost of one. So whenever you play a land... It makes an equipment, the equip cost is one mana, and it gives the equipped creature an ability to pay one more mana and tap to deal two damage to target creature or planeswalker. The equipment itself is not particularly powerful, it's okay, it, does, it can't target players, so you can't just generate a ton of this equipment, equip it to your creatures, and then use the damage to outright kill a player. But it's still interesting nonetheless, and I hope this is something they continue in the future. I like the token artifacts, and I think token equipments are also very interesting. This set does have a theme centered around equipment. Yesterday I showed off a Boros Commander. This card could fit into such a Commander deck. Overall, it's, it's very nice. So this is actually the card that I wanted to pair with Jessica, and I'm running out of time, so I believe this is probably going to be the last card I talk about for now. I wanted to talk a little bit more about some of the other cards, but I will do that in a later video. I also wanted to shorten the length of some of my videos. I know it can be kind of, you know, it can be a lot to, to sit and watch a video that lasts an hour. So I'm trying to experiment and create videos that may be a little shorter. So this is Rogaric, I think, son of Rogoth. And this is a cobble. So, so something about cobbles is that they are red. They have a color identity that makes them red. You can tell by that small circle next to the word legendary. It's colored red, so this is a red creature, even though it has a zero mana cost. And a lot of the kobolds had a cost of zero. They haven't done one in quite some time, though. Zero cost cards are, also, are always very powerful, and you have to be careful how many you actually make for stuff like Storm. Uh, this one is pretty good. It has zero power, one just one toughness, but it has three keyword abilities, First Strike, Menace, and Trample. And it also has Partner. So I'm going to pair this probably in a Commander deck featuring Jessica. Because I can summon this over and over and over. And then when I finally do summon Jessica, it's going to come in onto the battlefield with a huge number of loyalty counters. Think about how many times in a game you could actually cast just 
this cobbled. The first time you cast it, it's zero. The second time you cast it, it's two. The, the third time you cast it, it's four. The and, and then six. So you, in a commander game, you can summon this card a bunch of times. And then if I summon Jessica one or two times, she can actually enter the battlefield with a ton of counters. Even if I don't want to go that route about caring about the number of times my commander was cast, this is also rather decent in an equipment deck. It comes with three keywords or a deck fe uh, featuring auras or a deck that increases the power of your creatures. Because this has three keyword abilities, which for three mana, I think that's very powerful. And even just being able to get a creature onto the battlefield for no mana at all is extremely impressive. I really like this card. This is one of my favorite cards in the entire set spoiled so far. And I was looking for a really low mana cost partner commander. And here it is. You can't really go much lower than a zero cost. So a lot of decks, I think, a lot of different commander decks, I think, can run this card. You don't even have to stay mono red. You could partner it with uh, different colors. This is a card I would say keep your eye on. The fact that it's also uncommon instead of rare is just amazing. So that's it for now. Please stay tuned later where I'm going to go over some more cards that have been spoiled for Commander Legends. A lot of cards have already been spoiled. I didn't even come close to covering all of them. So thanks for watching. This is Magic with Class. My name is Jeremy Class, and I'm always reminding you to gather with class. See you later, guys. Thanks for the support.